Welcome back. When controversy erupted early this year over the Susan G. Komen Foundation's decision to stop funding Planned Parenthood, fingers were immediately pointed at Komen Vice President Karen Handel, who, as a Republican candidate in Georgia, had opposed Planned Parenthood funding. Well, in the thick of the controversy, Komen's founder and CEO, Nancy Brinker, came here to defend the decision and, in a sense, absolve Handel of blame. Well, let me just, for the record, tell you, Karen did not have anything to do with this decision. This was decided at, at the board level and also by our mission. In the days following my interview with Brinker, Handel resigned her position. Brinker herself recently stepped back from her day-to-day -day leadership of the organization as it regroups. Now Handel has written her side of the story entitled Planned Bullyhood. And Karen Handel joins me now. Thank you very much for joining us. Andrew, thank uh, you so much for having me. Well, I very much want your perspective. Uh, in the days that followed that decision, there was a lot of controversy over exactly what happened. Tell us, from your perspective, what your role was and how the Komen Group responded. I was the senior vice president of public policy, brought on board to do advocacy for the organization. And as um, things play, as things played out, Komen was really looking at how to deliver breast health services in the best, most effective way. Unfortunately, what transpired is you saw the left and Planned Parenthood literally bullied up on Komen over just $700,000 when Komen was about breast health, not about politics. Planned Parenthood made it about politics. But, of course, they say that you all made it about politics by going after Planned Parenthood, that there was, in fact, a decision made because of politics to go after Planned Parenthood, which was being opposed by many groups, uh, conservative Republican groups, who believe that Planned Parenthood's role in abortion care uh, or in providing abortion services and reproductive services, which is about 3% of what they do, not the mammography, not the breast, well, the breast well, one health, thing, let's, that let's, that was the focus and that this was basically a, a game plan since you first entered. Well, first of all, the, the issues with Planned Parenthood had been affecting Komen for at least a decade, long before, long, long before my time. And what I find interesting here is that it somehow is political to not want to give grants to Planned Parenthood, yet it's apolitical to force an entity to do the grants. The bottom line for Komen is they were focused on what is in the best interests of women and breast health because after all Planned Parenthood does not do mammograms and when I think about breast cancer when most Americans think about breast cancer it's not left it's not right it's just about saving women from this horrible disease and that was Komen's focus uh, let, let me focus on the days immediately following that interview with Nancy Brinker when the decision was reversed. You write in your book that Karl Rove and others, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, uh, pressured Brinker to back down on the position that you had taken. Now, we've gotten in touch with both uh, Karl Rove and Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and spokesmen, spokespeople for them say uh, that that did not take place. Karl Rove is denying any involvement, Wasserman Schultz is saying that uh, he says Mrs. Handel's account is not accurate and uh, Wasserman Schultz says the characterization of the call a call to Nancy Branker as threatening could not be further from the truth. I can only relate how it was related to me when the events were unfolding. What I can tell you is that it is without question that Komen was on the receiving end of, of, a, of a bullying beat up by Planned Parenthood uh, and the left. The organization was receiving bomb threats. We had you know, Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz was weighing in. Um, there's no question she was trying to pressure the organization. Um, corporate sponsors were being contacted and told, see what we're doing to Komen. If you don't stop supporting them, you're next. That is bullying it to the absolute definition of it. You claim that you became scapegoated. Uh, we've ch been in touch, of course, with Komen. They say that you're entitled to your own recollections and that they're moving forward. But in what way were you scapegoated? I think it was the scapegoating came from, frankly, from the liberal media and the left. 
Um, I was singled out for my politics. And, and frankly, Andrea, our friend Nancy Brinker, our mutual friend Nancy Brinker, was singled out for her politics. And yet, the politics of Planned Parenthood, of their president, Cecile Richards, when, when was given a complete pass. You didn't see um, uh, Nancy Brinker speaking and vilifying the left, yet Pl Cecile Richards was a keynote speaker for the Democratic Convention. She is on the campaign trail for Barack Obama. The organization is giving 10, uh, upwards of $10 million in political ads to help support Barack Obama. She even received a, a phone call from him. Komen has been completely apolitical, focused on one thing and one thing only, and that's breast cancer. And the only people who made this about politics was Planned Parenthood but, and the left. But by by ending the funding to Planned Parenthood, you were in effect denying screenings to millions of women who rely on Planned Parenthood because they cannot afford uh, medical care on their own, private physicians. That is absolute nonsense. Komen was realigning those dollars into better, more effective programs so that they could do more mammograms, more screenings, because Planned Parenthood does not do mammograms. And let's also keep in mind, 700000 in Planned Parenthood's $1 billion budget is inconsequential. Planned Parenthood wanted the alignment with, a com with Komen because it gave them legitimacy, credibility, allowed them to wrap themselves in the in in the pink. That's what this was about. And Komen is, has well, always been focused on its mission, and will always be fo continue to be if, focused on that if mission. If Planned Parenthood was not doing a useful service, why did Komen then reverse itself and re-engage? Planned Parenthood. I think that's a question you'll have to ask of Komen. What I can tell you, um, I disagreed with the decision. I felt that Komen should have held the line because, again, breast cancer is not about left. It's not about right. Komen didn't want to be in the abortion wars. We wanted to be only about breast cancer. But why, why then uh, is there a, a widespread perception that you were pushing Komen into politics where it had never been before in decades and decades of, of laudatory work that when you and others who are very strongly opposed, openly opposed to uh, any kind of abortion rights, that your entry into the fray is what facilitated this move against Planned Parenthood. That was the press's spin on it. That was not what happened within inside the organization. The issues with Planned Parenthood had been um, affecting the organization for long before my time, a decade at least. I only came into Komen in April. Are you really suggesting that as one person I came in and was able to do all well, this in one job. fell swoop? That's ridiculous. The organization was trying to do the best right thing it could with its grants. They wanted to go to direct mammography providers instead of having the middle woman, if you will, um, involved in it so that they could do more for women, more. And they were always realigning those dollars. And it was the press, with the help of Planned Parenthood, who hijacked this for the sake of politics. Well, I think it was also, uh, to a great degree, the membership, because it's been the, the women and men who were members of Komen who have had such an impact on their reorganization. We have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining Thanks us so today. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And we will be right back.